Hi Teddies, it's your Island Doll Winnie and I am back with another video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Only if you like the content that you see, hit the like button and share if you care. So guys, if you watched last week's video, which was what's in my hospital bag, then you know she's had her baby already. So in this week's video, as promised, I'm going to be doing my first story time talking about my labor and delivery experience giving birth here in the Bahamas during a pandemic. So if you're interested in that, do stick around because I'm also going to be revealing the gender of my baby. So what do you think I had, a girl or a boy? Comment down below now. Do not cheat and wait until I say, and then be like, oh yeah, I guessed it right. Play fair. But yes, guys, so I'm not gonna waste any time. We're gonna get straight into this video. But before I run this intro, let me just say, disclaimer, I am just giving my opinion, my experience on what I experienced and witnessed. I'm not here to bash anybody. You know, you have some good doctors, bad doctors, good nurses, bad nurses, and so forth. Well, maybe there's gonna be a little bit of bashing just a little bit because when you know better you should do better but i digress but guys let's run the intro and get into this week's video all right my beautiful unapologetic teddy so like i said i'm not even going to be wasting Anytime, just getting straight into this story time, my first story time. So like I said, this is about my labor and delivery experience, giving birth here in the Bahamas during the pandemic. So let me start off by just saying, if you watch my previous videos, then you know that I was doing antenatal private care my entire pregnancy, and I was actually planning to go the entire way private but due to our decision to go public you know that's what we did but initially i was going to use an awesome pediatrician by the name of carlos thompson things in thomas and my antenatal physician awesome dr austin davis i attended my antenatal care at the west valley medical center medical clinic and it was amazing he was going to be my private care for my delivery however that never transpired we went public now that that's out the way i did not go to the hospital for your regular issues with pregnancy so i actually was admitted in the hospital at 37 weeks and four days and let's get into how that happened so prior to four days before being admitted i actually told my husband like i have this weird feeling i'm not gonna go on my duty but before we jump ahead let's go through it let's dissect this a bit okay <laughs> so i told him that i got up wanted to secure the bags everything like that so i did three days later my mom comes by and she was actually there the day before when she came back to check on me because she didn't like the way i was looking and i was telling her i'm feeling a little dizzy um, my vision's kind of blurry and so she was like okay you know what she told my husband get her bags get the baby hospital bag put in our jeep um, me and my husband, she, because I have a feeling when we go to the hospital, they're going to admit her. So fun fact with the women in my mom's side of the family, none of them went to the, hus the hospital when their water broke. They all went, to my understanding, like dizzy spells, they either had blackouts, they didn't even realize it, and so they went to the hospital. So, so said, so done. Went to the hospital. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to get checked up. I'm going to be fine. Boom did not happen. So I went to PMH, which is Princess Margaret Hospital here in the Bahamas, the private sector, made sure I was admitted and everything. The administration staff was really nice, it was not. So here's where it gets interesting. So I met a pregnant lady sitting there on a bench. She was there well before me apparently. So I sat down, the staff was like, okay, someone's gonna be to you shortly. So, by the way, I'm in there by myself. Only patients 
or staff are allowed in the hospital at this time. You are not allowed any visitors right now due to the pandemic situation, which honestly, as the story progressed, you understand why that was so disheartening because you'd want at least your significant other to be in there with you to come and visit or whatever have you. But due to circumstances, they're not allowing that at all. So if you have to get items in, what had to happen was my husband would have to bring it to the door, the security, and they'll call in and say, this is for patient so-and-so and bring it in. Or if you knew someone that worked there, then they can always bring it into the, um, the individual, which happened in my circumstances and for other persons as well, you know. Um, so anyways, back to it. So I asked the young lady on the bench, I'm like, how long have we been sitting here? She's like, oh, for a while. So I'm like, what did you come in for? She said, she was in pain, contractions or what's not. So I'm like, okay, that's not good. <laughs> so staff passed and like, can we help? Da, da, da. We tell them, they're like, okay, someone's coming. Next one comes and it becomes a routine for almost about 25 minutes. Say about 20 minutes to 25 minutes. I'm, I don't even want to exaggerate. I don't think it was more than that, but say 20 to 25 minutes. That's what it was. And she was there again, way longer than me. I came meeting her there. So when the next person passed and they're like, um, what's going on with you ladies? You being assisted? I automatically started speaking. I'm like, this woman is not about to crap out next to me or have this baby on the floor next to me. I don't want that to be my first experience <laughs> to motherhood. Okay. Cause that's going to psych me out. So they come and I explain to her what I'm going through. I said, and she's been here longer than me. I'm like talking for this lady. <laughs> All right. And she's like, yeah, so sweet. And so the nurse then goes, okay, well, we're going to deal with you first, referring to myself because of the dizziness and what's not. And they had someone come, another personnel come and deal with her. So I go into the back. They take me to antenatal. And I do the regular physical. And I came into contact with some awesome doctors there, like Dr. Cooper, Dr. Colberg. And I wish I got some of the nurse's name. Because I don't want, when I start to tell you all what started going down, the innocence of we're guilty. Unfortunately, I don't have means. So, yeah. But you know, in every scenario, there's always that one bad apple that spoils the bunch. But anyways, so I go into antenatal. I get my physical and everything like that. They're checking me out and X, Y, Z. And um, I do my urine test. It tests positive for um, preeclampsia, which explained a lot. And then also, I was told that I had um, gestational hypertension, which is due to the pregnancy. Your high, um, your pressure levels fluctuate more than it would. Because I've never played with pressure in my life, high blood pressure, none of that stuff. And so they made the decision that since I was at 37 weeks and four days, the baby, I'm basically in my full term. And it wouldn't make any sense to have me go on stressing my body out and more so may potentially put the baby in stress. So, okay. They admit me so I'm taken outside I do a COVID test which is the first time I had the done one because I haven't traveled since I came back from Canada during before the pandemic really kicked off to have to take one so I did a nasal swab and um, I'm cleared no COVID so I'm admitted onto the wall the ward and antenatal bed 12 and I can remember bed 12 because it was very uncomfortable they need to upgrade like come on man they gotta do better with that. But nonetheless, I'm admitted onto the ward. Okay. Um, thereafter, doctor comes in, Dr. Cooper comes in, and he says to me, this is a Sunday, by the way. So he comes, he says to me, okay, so we're either gonna induce you by tonight or first thing Monday morning. Okay. So they don't get to do it tonight. First thing in the morning around 9.30ish, quarter to 10, 10 o'clock calling. He comes in and he's like, okay, Mrs. Bryan, we're going to induce you now. So he goes um, off and then he comes back. Yes. So he leaves and comes back with this little small triangular pill. I'm like, okay, do I have to ingest that? It's like, no, lay on the bed upright 
and he inserts it into Mahuha. You know, my good, good. <laughs> but yeah, so he inserts this pill to induce labor. And I'm like, okay, I got this, you know? Like I said, it's like quarter to nine in the morning. All right. Fast forward a little bit, about a couple hours, say around 12 or so. Start feeling a little pain and stuff. I'm like, okay, still got this, 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 you know? What did I say that for? What did I say that for? It intensified. And at this point now, they're keeping track on me, you know, to see how far along I am. Because I think if I'm correctly, you know, if you can correct me in the comments, I think you have to be about 10 centimeters before you can say, for sure, what's not. So they um induce me. It's taking long. Bear with me with him. I don't know what he's on today. But um yeah, so it's taking long, all right, for me to really say reach these centimeter marks. So they decide, okay, well if it, I'm not at a certain point by a certain time, they're going to induce me again. I'm feeling pain. It's now around one o'clock, and at this time, I'm only about one and a half centimeters. Okay, it's like one, two o'clock or so. I'm like, oh my freaking gosh! All right, so this amazing nurse there, she one of the patients left, and she's like, come, we're gonna move you up to the next bed that's more comfortable and what's not because we're gonna have to hook you up on the monitor. The, um, listen to the baby's heartbeat and everything so you could be comfortable. You want to move? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to move. I grabbed my suitcase, she grabbed my stuff so fast, and we went to bed number four on the antenatal ward. Okay, so I'm in there, I'm comfortable now. They hooked me up, but the comfortableness did not last long, baby. When that started hitting me, it's now about six o'clock, 6 30. Doctor comes in. This is Dr. Colebrook, I believe, at this time. Checks me. I'm only about, I'm still at one and a half centimeters. I'm like, what? I'm only at what? And I feel like this? Why? Why do I feel like this is not only at one, <laughs> one and a half centimeter? I'm like, dude, work it out at this point. So I'm like boosting myself at this time because. Besides the physical pain, mentally, it's draining, okay? So the nurses on this shift, the doctors, everything is awesome. It's just pushing through it, you know? Now, at this point now, I'm like throwing up to the point where my chest is burning me, okay? The shift changes. Things get real. The night shift those nurses on the night shift. Now, I, for one, didn't have issues with the nurses. Besides one, I wish I knew your name, because I don't like when the innocent suffer for the guilty. You understand me? But I wish I knew your name so I could give you the, you know, the accolades you deserve for being such a jack A. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. For being such a jack A. She was a tyrant, this nurse in particular. I mean, the way she spoke to some of the patients was beyond me. And I had one particular running with her. Um, and my running with her came when I went to the restroom. A nurse had taken my monitor off. Um, it's a machine that releases paper, your pathogen papers. It is with a heartbeat and whatever else, right? Took it off for me to go to the restroom because I was throwing up much. Um, the little shine tin they give you wasn't working out for me. I just had to go to the restroom. She passes and she's like, oh, why did you pull this off your machine, pull the machine um, strings off of you? Why did you disconnect yourself from your hep lock? And you know, the hep lock is what goes in your hand for your um, medication or whatever they're giving you to feed it to you. And she's going on and on. This is you. It's not about you. It's about your babies. I'm like, you think? I wouldn't be going through this if it wasn't. 
So I'm like, you know what? I'm not even gonna entertain this. I strictly said, um, the nurse pulled it off for me to use the restroom. Oh, the nurse pulled it off for you? Why did she pull it back? The nurse passed, she's like, oh, I took it off. She needed to go. So when she walks off now, not apologizing or anything, the nurse is like, are you all right? Do you need help get back? And I said, yes. I said, but do me a favor before you leave off of your shift, because she was leaving. Um, very beautiful, tall um, nurse, nice hair. I think she was a Jamaican or something. Could be wrong, but she had a little accent. But um, yeah, so she's, I said to her, can you show me how to disconnect this and reconnect it back myself? I will my help lock. And I particularly asked her to show me with the help lock because what they had done, one of the nurses that was supposed to be watching my room, she took so long to come when I was calling her, my medicine had finished in the bag, that if you don't know when your medicine is done, what can happen sometimes is if it's not disconnected, you can either have a bubble that comes down into it, or you'll notice, like with me, my blood started going up into the little the little um pipe, head into the bag, and I'm like, oh hell no come disconnect me. So after that incident, I made it my mission before. Nice nurses left. And like on the, on the night shift, there were some nice ones, but there was particularly one. It was two, but it was one that was really tiring. And I'm like, don't leave me not knowing how to take care of myself, please. And it sounds so idiotic to say it like that because you have the person there to help take care of you, but oh, some of that be on something. The same nurse, a lady on the room across from me, her water broke. They induced us the same time. And she's calling her. Like, we are seeing, you know, the situation. Not even situation, the situation. She's calling her. She's calling her to the roommate inside there, the next um, young lady that's um, in, awaiting to have her baby as well. She's like, nurse, um, patient's calling you. This lady legit said, and I quote, it's like they be hearing you have fun and then decide to call you. The, <laughs> the lady in the bed across from me, we just automatically looked at each other like, you hear what I hear? Like you heard, you heard that too, right? Just, okay, just making sure. Don't, you know, don't want to be tripping out. All right, so that's what they on. <laughs> that's what you on talking about graduation and all kind of thing and some tests whatever this test was they have to take and I'm just like oh hell no Lord you're gonna have to walk with me through this because I don't have to tell some people some things because my mama jumped out of me I'm gonna end up cussing people out I don't even cuss but I'm gonna cuss someone out and I don't want to do that because they gotta be the one take care of me and that's gonna be awkward <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, she finally goes and deal with the lady. It's now about nine something in the night. The doctor comes back to check on me. At this point now I am weak. I am twisting in this bed and I'm like, anybody that's going through labor, you know what time it is, okay? But I'm spent just trying to get comfortable. They check me and the thing is, all this checking, 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 oh, Ugh, it's so annoying. <laughs> Shout outs to you females out there that have five or more kids that went through this, especially in the Bahamas, especially in the public sector. You know, all the real MVPs, all right? Because, who? yeah. But, um, so, doctor comes, check me, she goes, oh, okay, you're only at two centimeters right now. I'm like, what? It's 10.30, almost 11. What are you talking about? I'm only at two? She's like, yeah, two, about two, call it two and a half. She's like, you know what? I think you can go over to the labor ward now. So I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Keep in mind now. Nobody gives me the memo yet that you have to be about 
I think it's 10 centimeters, 8 to 10 centimeters before you even can push or what's not. So I'm thinking I'm golden. I can go across now. You understand me? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm Gucci. I'm good, you know? So they grab my stuff. Um, they're like, okay, the bed is there. They take me across to labor ward. Put me in this nice bed. I am good. Liddy, that um, water broke. She happens to be in the bed next to me. And we're talking. I'm like, oh, so you going? You what? What happened? She had a baby. She like she had to literally get real with them. She's like, y'all either gonna take me across, or I'm gonna be here. And they took her across. She had a baby. Um, so as she made it across because <clears throat> she was telling the baby was coming, and the nurse in particular was not listening. So she could have ended up having a baby right then and there. But anyway, so we're in there, and this sweet mid nurse, a midwife, my midwives that dealt with me on the labor ward were amazing. You hear me? Amazing. The staff, and they switch out so much, I can't even, I wish I got their names. The nurses, the midwives, the, like those ladies on the labor ward, besides two of you, you get no snaps but <laughs> y'all were amazing okay she dealt with me so well it's um monday going into tuesday okay and man it was crazy the next midwife comes on it's now oh after my first before my first midwife left uh, my water had broke, but the membrane or whatever was still kind of attached. So she had to like physically, I know this might be TMI, but she had to physically go and like finish rupture it. Not pleasant at all. And after that was ruptured completely, ugh, I thought I was feeling pain before. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> it got real. So, she leaves the next midwife. Comes on. It's now Tuesday. So, I've been in labor from Monday. Call it morning. Because the pain really hit me Monday around 11-ish. 11.30 or so. It's now Tuesday. Deal with my second midwife. She's checking me. I'm on the pathogen. Doctor comes and check me. I'm only at two and a half centimeters still. They're like, okay, you shouldn't have come across to the label ward. You're not even close to go, um, give him, pushing this baby out. I'm like, wait, what? Like, oh no, you have to be about, this is when they dropped the bomb. You have to be about eight. And then they said, I don't want to misquote. And they said eight or 10 centimeters, something like that. The push not, and if you saw my face, here and there, I was still at two, two and a half centimeters. And how I'm supposed to be, like how where I'm supposed to get to to bring this baby home. I was like, oh God, I don't know if we gonna make it, you know? And he's like, oh, you don't know that the body can endure this and da 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 da. And I'm like, <laughs> listen here, in my mind, I'm saying, I ain't even hearing you if you only know. But, anyways, so. Going into now, Tuesday afternoon, I'm on my third midwife. They changed over shift now. Tuesday afternoon now, still in labor. Still in flicking labor. <laughs> Contractions busting my head. Okay? And they have you laying on your back. It's best for the baby, this and that, the machine can hear the heartbeat and whatever else and stuff. But it's so uncomfortable with the pain and everything. So, doctor comes in now. And this is Dr. Colbrook at this point, if I remember correctly. And at this point now, I'm like sweating, okay? And I'm asking my midwife, like to wet the gauze so me to wipe down with myself like I'm sweating I'm throwing up can't, I can't come off the bed at this point now so she's bringing the pail to me 
she's bringing the little shiny thing to me for me to just spit up in or whatever have you and it's crazy i'm so tired from the pain or whatever it is it's down here like i'm blacking out falling asleep and the pain is like wait bring me back to the doctor comes in it's about five something in the afternoon and he's like okay i don't like this he's like you're just three centimeters almost three and a half like you're just three centimeters from that time and now he's like if you don't progress by six call it seven o'clock we're gonna give you in a c-section because you're not progressing fast enough now i've disclaimed i've let the disclaimer about my family history through my, my family's history that I have c-section because of certain issues whatever have you so okay i'm like listen it's already five something five six seven we're gonna call it i don't think unless god come down and physically push this baby down more am i gonna reach this centimeter percentage i need to be to that vaginal birth to give up to have a vaginal birth so i'm bracing myself like this c-section on the way we ain't gotta be dealing with this pain too much longer six o'clock comes doctor doesn't come back seven o'clock comes doctor doesn't come back eight o'clock comes tuesday now doctor doesn't come back so i'm now at this point like hold up we can't do a full monday again not how i'm feeling because the pain now is in I have my midnight, my midwife. I'm like, is the doctor coming? Like, because I need to have this C-section, like ASAP. My body, I feel like my body is telling me, physically, I am not going to do a natural birth. She said, well, the doctor, you know, they have to make their rounds, but he's coming. Little did I know, the doctor's shift has changed, and there's a new doctor and team coming to see me. She was sweet, nothing against her, but ooh, <laughs> to how the words that came out of her mouth irritated my soul. <laughs> Y'all listen. The new doctor comes on. It's a female, sweet, nice little lady, you know, young lady. And she looks at my chart. She checks me. She's like, "Oh, okay, so you're only three and a half centimeter." I'm like, "What?" From Monday to now, I was like, ma'am, can I have a C-section, please? Because I'm throwing up and my chest hurts. I'm dropping asleep like I'm blacking out. The pain is bringing me back. Like, this is not. I'm burning up with a fever. I do not feel well. She goes, well, Mrs. Brian, we don't just do C-sections by request. I'm like, my body is telling me I can't do this. Oh, you'll be surprised at what your body can do. Miss, you heard me. I don't think you heard me. Like, you know, what? That's not what I want to hear. She's like, I'm going to talk to my team and see what happens. I'm like, okay. She goes, comes back. Well, I spoke to my head, and he says that we're going to let you, we're going to see how you progress more because, um, you're not showing any situations that would need a C-section. I'm like, excuse me? As like the two doctors before I told me, six to seven o'clock comes, I'm gonna have a C-section because from Monday to now, I'm not progressing fast enough. Y'all tell me I have preeclampsia, y'all tell me I have hypertension, um, gestational hypertension due to this pregnancy, like all of these stuff. Not to stress the baby, not to stress my body, you induce me and you're gonna have me still going through this from Monday like how does it make sense she's like you'll be fine she goes hmm. it's now 10 something almost 11 in the night at this point now I I don't give a damn they talking about you can't use your phone with the machine right there I use my phone to tell, text my husband I'm like this pain is crazy my aunt is able to send one of her nurse um, male friends in to check on me. He's like, hopefully they send her into, you know, have a C-section soon. Oh, were we mistaken? 
where are we mistaken okay <laughs> and that's what i hate when they change shifts because then the person on the new shift can always end up overturning what the previous shift said but anyways so it's now 11 30 almost 12 o'clock mm. Mm -mm -mm. okay and keep in mind we went from um, it's on this day now Tuesday is the 8th of June okay but it's like 11 30 almost 12 o'clock she finally comes back um before she comes back my midwife was like okay I may need to talk to the doctor for you Mrs. Brian because I don't I don't think I like this now um she, she's outside talking to her um colleague and they're like what's going on with your patient she's like I think my own is going to be um a c-section she's like because she's on her third pathogen on my shift you know and she still isn't progressing i think they need to give her a c-section man so she's like well, how long they had her in labor how long they induce her she's like i'm seeing from monday morning and she's like wait and this is how far she reached okay yeah they need to give her a c-section then especially looking at a chart and i'm hearing them talking outside my door and i'm like god please let them let the doctor hear them and be with them so it's about quarter to 12 which would be wednesday morning now the night and i am now burning up i can't get cold for no reason chest killing me from throwing up and this pain Nurse passes the door and I'm calling for a nurse. Like, I don't even care if you ain't my nurse, my midwife or whatever. I'm just calling it, all right, to try and wet the scars for me to cool my body down. This lady nurse walk, looks in. She doesn't even come in the room, y'all. She just looks in. I'm like, trying to get her attention. She looks me square in the eye and she calls the nurse. Can't remember what her name is. Sweet, sweet woman. When I tell you all my midwives were nice, they were good. She looks in, doesn't come in to say, oh, what's the situation? You look distressed, anything. <laughs> she says, oh, your patient needs you. And walks off. I'm like, bro, suppose I was dying. Like, you, you're not even going to ask me what's going on. <laughs> so you can even tell her if you're not allowed to say deal with another person's patient or help or whatever. I don't know how it goes, but I'm just saying. So she comes and she's like, oh, um. You needed me? I'm like, yeah, she helps me out. Boom. She's like, you know what? I want to get you prepared because I think you're going to have a C-section. I, I I hope they don't let you go on. I say, hey, God, I hope so, but I can't go a next full day. It's now 1 o'clock Wednesday, Wednesday morning, 9th of June. Doctor finally comes, checks me again. She's like, oh, okay, you're only at four and a half centimeters so um she looks at my pathogen papers and stuff like that and she's like okay i'll be back I'm like, oh my god this woman can cost me pass oh you're yeah, like really really already let's do this like come on <laughs> come on she comes back around two o'clock two two twenty five or so wednesday morning and she, I quote, this was her words, I'm not making this up. It match set yourself in the mood. I was induced from Monday morning. Pain been licking my backside from Monday morning. I have not progressed that fast enough. Pressure been fluctuating up and down because of the pregnancy, stress, my body is stressed out. They let me go. I've been in labor from Monday morning. It's now Wednesday morning, 2.25 in the morning. She comes in, the doctor now. She comes in and she says, Okay, I spoke with my head. Mrs. Brian, you win. You're going to have your C-section. I'm like, you win? This ain't a game. We're not playing a game. I said, you know what, Usa, you know, at the bus of Sinclair, woo, 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 woo. 
let's just get this c-section and go home <laughs> with our baby okay i said okay yep i ain't what i wanted to say but i said okay <laughs> so my midwife had already helped me get sorted out i just barely can move now i have to make sure my body is completely clean of jewelry come off and I'm like, Lord, they didn't have me here so long. I'm exhausted. I don't feel well. And unfortunately, we had a friend that didn't have a very out good outcome due to circumstances in the public health care system. So I'm like, you know what? You don't hope for the worst, but you never know. So I'm like, you know what? Let me send a message to my in my family because then like again i said nobody's able to come in visit xyz i wasn't able to use the phone for so long because i was on the machine um monitoring the baby heart rate pressure all of that stuff so i'm like okay i have it off of me for a while so i sent a voice note and my family's group to my husband let them know what's going on i'm gonna have c-section emergency c-section now at this point finally they're stunned to know how long I didn't even wait for response afterwards they were telling me X, Y, and Z. So now the Garni comes, they wheel me off, and this is not to even crack a joke. One side of the hospital where they had me was like, come here, let me fix you. Okay. It needs to be renovated bad. So maybe some of those nurses are like walking out because they're probably underpaid overworked because I remember a couple nurses working over a different shift or was not. So you're underpaid, overworked, and then you're working in conditions that are like not feasible because when I'm on the antenatal ward, there were no air conditioning. It was like really warm. I was expecting it to be cold. Got to the labor ward, it was down there the same thing. But the air condition got fixed. Crazy scenario while I was there, this local news station eyewitness news had called and they're like they're following up on a claim that the maternity wards don't have air conditioning and nobody wanted to answer the response when i tell you pmh princess margaret hospital did not waste time they not only had someone fix the air conditioning they down there had people putting in new air condition i'm like okay so if they could do this why they have these people the patients were one in their conditions and the workers in that condition. But I digress. So anyway, I'm being wheeled off to theater. <laughs> and when I tell you, it was like being wheeled from being town to life a key, I kid you not. And I'm like dozing in and out of consciousness because I'm in so much pain, all right? And I can take pain. My pain tolerance is pretty high, I think. But I could not. My body was like, mm -mm. So, we cut the bed and I'm like, is this the PMH? What the hell? Okay, I see that you're actually renovated the hospital. At least one side. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't get the next side yet, but the theater is state of the art my c-section went amazing i was talking to my surgeons yes yeah, so like i said the c-section went amazing i had awesome surgeons was talking to them the entire time the doctor that actually took so long for me to have the c-section she was actually a part of the team and you know despite that little glitch in our relationship we're cool but yeah they were betting if it was a boy or girl it was just fabulous and i got to see my baby when they took my baby out so it was really really good and you know what i'm not even gonna let you guys wait any longer how about we reveal the gender of what i had because as you can hear my baby's awake now so what do you think i had a boy or a girl mm -hmm. so yes so let's 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 get into this reveal and then we get on with the story. Yes, you guys. So, on to what we had. A beautiful, healthy baby boy. His name is Cairo Kenyut Bryan. And this is the newest member of our family, our bundle of joy. Yes. And I must say, being a first-time mom, it is amazing to be 
a mother um my welcome to motherhood is amazing my birthday is thursday july 8th and this has to be the best gift i could have ever gotten i'm so thankful to god and this whole experience has been so crazy but he makes all of it worth it the good the bad the ugly so his death this is Cairo Kenyon Bryan he was born June 25 at 8 pounds and 5 ounces y'all there's a stack in me to do vaginal birth well <laughs> well <laughs> but yes so did you guess right did you guess girl or boy don't cheat did you wait until I said, or did you guess beforehand? And as you can see, he's rocking his yoga sprout outfit. This boy keeps kicking off his socks. I don't know. Does your baby do that? Like, he has an issue with socks. I don't know what the deal is. Like, you want to be a nudist or something? I don't know. But, um, yeah. So, this is our baby. But, back to the story. All right, you guys. So, excuse the multitasking that is taking place right now. But, back to the story. So, have a beautiful baby boy here, Cairo, and um, so I moved from C-section room, the theater, into the recovery room, and then I'm brought to post antenatal. I'm like, okay, we're out of the woods now. Oh, was she wrong, okay? Uh, I didn't have any issues personally with any of the staff there. However, there's one particular nurse, you know, there's always one bad apple to spoil the bunch, and just hearing how she dealt with some of the patients, it was very disturbing. And once I realized that once I was seen to be able to take care of myself, handle myself, they would bring my baby to me because I hadn't seen him since the C-section. I started pushing myself to move around and maneuver myself and they brought him to me and he was with me the entire time. Now, this particular nurse, I wish I had her name. And I don't want to call the wrong name. Okay, but just hearing her deal, deal with the patients, some of them was like I say disturbing. At one point, she told this lady that was in pain, and maternity is a very crucial time. Like labor, you feel like you're down there about to lose your mind. She said to her, "Oh, what are you complaining for? That's just a part of it. It's a part of it." Talking to her rough walks off, and. It was a statement she made to the next woman that was in severe pain. She's like, walking off, she's like, oh, everyone have womb, but not everyone's supposed to have a baby. And me and all the other ladies look at each other like, what did she just say? But anyways, I digress because this particular nurse is, she came on to her job as like starting her day, she did not want to be there. Which in when you have some patients that have showed me why the job can be difficult, but in the healthcare profession in particular, don't take a job just for a check because it's gonna be frustrating. You're gonna be like just frustrated with small things after a while sometimes, but if you don't have a love for it, that's certain fields you don't go in if you cannot handle it. I don't think she in particular should be there, but we were released on the 11th on Friday and we've been home just recovering it has been difficult getting used to not being able to move around by myself that much because I'm, I'm a person that's used to just getting up and doing you know and I have to sit back and just take it easy but all in all it it's all worth it it is all worth it to look in his beautiful face and I am just enjoying motherhood you know um i must say being pregnant during the pandemic it kind of robbed a lot of moms over here from doing some things that you would typically do with pregnancy photos and different things like that you to be creative and i think the first times mom like first time moms like myself felt it especially when it came to like delivery you know because visitors weren't allowed and so forth but all in all, I would do it again just for him. And I think every mom would say the exact same thing. At least I would hope so. But yes, you guys. Yes, yes, yes. That is it for this story time. My first story time. I hope you like it. If you like me to do more story times, comment, 
down below if you want me to do more story times. But yes, this is the end of my story time about my labor and delivery experience, giving birth here in the Bahamas during the pandemic and during on you know on the public ward or what's not. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this story time. I will see you guys in the next video. As always, remember to be you unapologetically. Okay?